world has come to an end. You know? How are you going to make it? What will you do? What is your family saying to you? What are your friends saying to you? You've been working for so long, you don't know what to do with yourself every day and where do you go. So what happens to a lot of people, they go to a local coffee shop and talk to the other people unemployed, and they don't talk about anything about the old days when they all were working. So when people like Nanu put an organization like this together where you can network, pay attention to everybody. Work everybody. Put your cards in there. Make sure that everyone gets your card. You know? And that's the other thing. Make sure you have something on your card that people know what you're doing. Can you find another job? How long are you going to go without work? You know, it's not an easy time right now to find a job. You know, if it was an easy job, they wouldn't be laying off. They wouldn't lay off 300,000 300, people and say, it's a good month. We didn't lay off 400,000. We laid off 300,000. People said, well, you had it easy. The world and entrepreneurs started to You leave the world in patents. Why? Because we have the most innovative people here in the world, in America. I see one small business that's better managed because they can respond to what's going on. What constitutes a small business? They activate and they do things very quickly. They're not afraid to take chances. If you look at an entrepreneur starting a business, and I read business plans probably 30 to 40, 50 every month. I look at the business plan. And let me tell you what people look at if you're trying to raise money. I look at the first section I look at it is the management team. What have you done before? I don't care if you work for a large company that did things. You don't have that large company behind you anymore. What have you done on your own? The next thing I look at is if you know your competition, what's going on with your competition? If you can't tell me what your competition is doing, you don't know what I'm doing. And the last thing I look at, the most important thing, how do I get my money back out? If everyone's talking about now going public, I throw it out and say, you guys are crazy. No one's going public right now. If you look at what's going on in venture capital, funds are falling apart right now because nobody can take everything in public. The only thing you can do is buy each other's bad, bad companies and try to make money with them. We put a structure in all the companies I've been involved with that everybody had a decision-making process and the authority to do that. In corporate America, you have to ask 15 people for a signature before I can buy a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> in a small company, we don't do that. We go out and build things. Why? Because we respect each other's opinions to do those things. You know, why? Because we know we're kind of something to do. And that's why I talk about sales. Nobody wants to be a salesman. I made my living being a salesman. I made more than every president of every company I ever worked for. I made more than the most lawyers made. And my consulting business, I charge more than everybody else. It's because of what I'm judged on results. I it takes eight contacts all alone to go and make a contact to sell something. Whether you're selling a job or not, look at the hiring process today. First off, they screen your resume through a, a, a software program that says that you meet this criteria. So if you don't put the right words in, if you use a standard resume, you're not going to get screened anyway. But that's what's going on in all these things. They look at all those things and say, what are we going to do? You know, and I teach people to sell. People say, that's a bad word. And I said, yeah, I know. Most people think of tin man or something. Here's what entrepreneurs always tell me, the question. I'm new to business, a good idea to offer a lower price? You know, yikes, don't even think about losing a lower price to attract customers. Remember why you went into business, to make money. If you start giving stuff away, people say, oh, he's a prostitute, let me see how much I can get a better price for. And they start negotiating right off the bat. If I give you 10%, do I buy two, I get three? Never, ever do a price now. You can't compete on price. If you compete on price, a large company in your space is going to come out there and say, I'll, I'll go lower than price. And they have staying power. You don't have the staying power. You know, the market, everyone thinks the market is price sensitive. Everyone talks about this all the time. And then I give a couple examples, okay? People pay $50,000 for a Rolex watch. The same people pay $3 for a bottle of water. I get Lake Michigan water and I pay $3 to get a bottle of water. How about going to Star Street? What do you do to emerge and have cash? If you're in a startup phase, your target market will be less tangible than the target market for a company. But you gain experience running your business and you maintain accurate records of who actually purchased your product, you understand who the ideal customer is. And once you have a customer, you can sell them something again and again and again and again because people keep buying from someone they trust. How was I successful? I would leave one company and go to another company. It wasn't even similar. I'd go back to those people, like the, the CEO of General Motors, and say, I just started this new company, I'm doing all this stuff, who should I talk to? And they say, Jerry, you did such a great job the last thing, why don't you come and talk to these people? I never went to a product that had the same thing as I left before. Because I always believed I had the best product. How can I go back in with something else that's similar and say, by the way, what I sold you before was wrong, here's a better product. I can't do that, I'm too darn honest. 
So why focus on your target market? Okay? If you don't understand how you're going to tell your product or service to meet their needs, you have to be able to do that. And if you're looking for a job, you've got to do the same thing. I want to know as much about the person I'm calling on as I can. Sometimes you do a good job the guy's name. You find out a lot about the guy that you're in. There's anything on there. What is his hobby? Oh, he belongs to the Rotary Club. Oh, man, let's talk about the Rotary Club. Make the person feel comfortable. Let them talk. When you go on an interview, the problem is you're so nervous you start talking about reading your resume. I did this, I did that, blah, blah, blah. You don't talk about what benefit the company had or the hiring manager. I made my boss look good. Wow, I want to hear that. Once you determine who your customer is, it's important to identify the size of your customer. Is it large or small? Too many people go out there, and like I said, they go to school, they get an MBA, and it says, here's you can build 1% of a billion dollar mine. And nobody looks at that stuff. Like that. Consider an town focus on a niche. Trying to reach and sell a large target market is difficult and costly, and you're competing with big guys. Find a little niche. That's what all these little startup tech companies do. They find a niche and they go do that. And then companies like Microsoft say, what do you mean because you violated your patent? That's what they do. If it's too small, you have to capture enough customers to make a sufficient profit. You know, and I talk about all those things later on. Every firm must be considered to share the market and market segments on which it competes. By share, we mean the percentage of the market, okay? And being a math major, I try to put a few formulas together. We always throw formulas out. Okay? Put the market share, total company sales, units of dollars, total industry sales. Easy to figure out with your market share. It's not, it's not rocket science. Everyone makes it rocket science. Easy formula, okay? What do I do? I take the sales figure and total market size, you can calculate market share, okay? Share of market sum is X is sales of company X, total market. I'm gonna go quickly through a review here because my partner's gonna kick me the review. Knowledge of the customer names will determine the market size and what determines their buying decision. It's the same thing when you're looking for a job. Who's buying what? These are some key issues. I'm gonna leave a set of slides with my buddy here if you want to copy it together. Let's go back to this. Champions aren't made into. This is what Muhammad Ali said. Champions are made from something they have deep inside them, a desire, a dream, and a vision. They have to have the last minute stamina. They have to be a little faster, and they have to have the skill and the will. But always remember, the will must be stronger than the skill. Always remember what he said. And in conclusion, this is what I always say. What matters most is not how you see yourself. If you see yourself beat down, you're going to be beat down for Sorry I took some extra time. No, no, no. If you want to talk to me after the event, take a round all the time. It's a lot of you on my mailing list to give you this stuff. Thank you. Any one or two just burning questions that you have for Jerry? If somebody's got something that you just, you got to know right now, put that hand up. You won't have an opportunity like this very often. Yeah, Jerry's going to be here. We'll be networking. There'll be breaks. Separate room here. If you want to answer any question, anybody wants to meet up with it. I want to get my mail from you. It almost.